Hi, beautiful people. So I'm here with the lovely Ava Goulet, who's another co-author, uh, part of this beautiful collaboration for the book, Soul Mission, Leaders Ushering in the New Earth. And I'm gonna be asking Ava about her soul mission so you can get a feel for the kind of content of this book and the amazing wisdom that all of the beautiful women contributing to this book and man have to share. And then she's gonna be asking a little bit about my chapter as well. So hi, Ava, lovely to see you and to meet you. I know, thank you. It's so wonderful to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I ended up becoming a part of this book when I saw the title of the book, Soul Mission Leaders Ushering in the New Earth, because I um, have a body of work that I have been channeling and bringing forward for the children of the earth. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll backtrack for just a moment to tell you that I, I at one point suffered a traumatic brain injury. And after or during the lengthy process of recovering from that brain injury, I started receiving messages during the night um, and always at 3.20 in the morning um, about this body of work that needs to come forward for the children. Mm. And as I received these messages, I realized that I was being asked to start working with children and teaching the curriculum as I was receiving the information at 3.20 in the morning. So I started doing that and I started seeing these incredible, profound experiences that children were having. And I realized that I didn't know anybody else who was doing this work with children. I mean, we were playing games and singing songs, but it was all about spiritual concepts, like about chakras and auras and, and working with pendulums and dowsing rods and gemstones and crystals. But it was all given to me um, you know, at, at night in these really fun and playful ways. So children were it was like the children felt like they were in a regular summer camp where they're playing games and having fun and doing crafts all day but they were learning life skills at the same time things that they could take with them through the rest of their lives and parents really started seeing a difference in their child being able to self-regulate their child developed self-awareness they started developing more self-confidence and it really shifted the way family dynamics were structured because the children were starting to be able to um, take care of themselves when they were having a bad day. You know, they knew how to check in at that point in time with themselves and how to connect to their higher wisdom. And it really shifted things for families. So at that point in time, I started working with more and more children. Um, and then I started receiving the message, the world is ready and the children are waiting. And I thought I was just being given validation for the fact that I am doing what I was asked to do in these messages, which was to bring this information forward. But what I realized is I needed to start writing it down and sharing it with other adults because I couldn't create a global movement by myself. So I started a spirit camp teacher training program and started training um, other adults on how to bring this work forward for the children around the world. And then, of course, when um, the world shut down in March of 2020, I had to learn how to bring all of that onto a virtual platform because it had all been in person before. And that's when I saw the silver lining for me in the pandemic was realizing that I'm not going to have a global impact if I'm just teaching one on one. I have to be on a virtual platform. So I ended up taking both Spirit Camp and the teacher training program onto an online platform. And now I am reaching people around the world. And so this is a missing piece in child development because as, as human beings, we're made up of mind, body, and spirit. But our society really fails to nurture the spirit of a child, that essence of who they are. And this curriculum fills that void. Children are growing up understanding the need for the balance between mind, body and spirit. And they have they, they are learning ways and tools to tap into that and tap into their higher wisdom as early as five years old and really start understanding. Um, when they're having a bad day, 
they they have the skills to be able to look at what's going on and why am I having a bad day? And, oh, I've got a tool in my spirit toolbox that could help me adjust that and kind of get myself more back into center. So it's really empowering for children. Um, so uh, anyway, that is why I said yes, a full body yes to this book, because I feel like the body of work that I am channeling and bringing forward to the children around the world is ushering in a new earth. And that it's actually the children, in my opinion, who are ushering in the new earth, because as they embrace this body of knowledge and that connection to their spirit, the essence of who they are, they are really going to change the world as they're growing up because they will... Um, I mean, they're growing up understanding self-compassion and understanding their connection to everything around them and all that is. And when children have that, that innate wisdom and understanding that what we do affects everything and everyone around us, um, they grow up and um, have understanding and being responsible for their words, thoughts, deeds, actions, and it's going to shift the way that um, we see the world as these children age into adulthood. Oh, amazing. So. It's absolutely beautiful. It's such important work, isn't it? It and is. Like if only we were taught all of this at school and now you're teaching it, those life skills. I remember when I was little, like grading my day, like having an A plus day or a C minus day. If only I'd had yeah. someone teaching me, because you know how to self regulate and how to tune into my energy and all of that. Absolutely, and I have so many adults who have said that to me that I have also created a, um, the first spirit camp for little kids was like for ages five to twelve, and now there's a teen spirit camp, and so many adults have said, "But if my child is learning this, I never learned it. I need to learn it too." So now I have spirit camp for adults, and I have the teacher training program, and so it's becoming. Um, um, a, a, a program that can be developed, I mean, can be um, adjusted for any age group. And because so many people are now coming forward after I've done this for five years now, coming forward and saying, but we want more, we want more. So I've now started Dancing Jaguar Academy, which is an online virtual spirituality school for children children, tweens and teens. So there is a safe place that children can come and even go beyond the teachings that they've learned in spirit camp and even um, learn or take their teachings even deeper with other teachers. And, you know, we have two spirit camp teachers who are also therapists and they're developing teen programs to really help support teens um, because teens are struggling so much there are so many mental health issues with teens and if we can provide a safe space between the spirit camp um, curriculum and having um, licensed therapist as the ones who are running these groups it's it's a really wonderful place for teens to be able to come and get support Oh, it sounds amazing. Such valuable work. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, I want to hear about yours now. Tell me all about your chapter <laughs> and radiance. Yeah, so everything I write about is to do with radiance. And it's really been my journey. And I think when you hear the word radiance, it's about shining our light out. How do we shine our light out and shine our gifts into the world? And I don't know what it was like for you. But for me, it was a bit of a journey. It was quite difficult. And an incredibly frustrating journey because I used to work in brand and marketing and I used to be an actress and a presenter. <laughs> so in many ways, it should have been quite easy. It should have been the most natural thing in the world for me to become an entrepreneur, become a coach, a healer, and then tell people about it. But I realized I had all of these inner blocks uh, that were holding me back, these inner obstacles. So I had to go on this very deep journey myself and it became a lot about understanding my wounding and my own shadow and what I needed to heal in myself to feel safe enough to shine my light. So I went on a rather extraordinary journey. I gave up the brand and the marketing and I traveled the world for seven years. And I started off by becoming a meditation teacher of the heart, meditation teacher of the spiritual heart. And this is a really beautiful system that 
weaves together all of the wisdom from different spiritual traditions that talks about the seat of our soul, our divine essence being in our heart. And for me, that, that is the heart, excuse the pun, of everything that I teach. Our radiance is this natural, authentic expression of us, of us as love. And the problem is lots of stuff gets in the way of us expressing that. So the work, the journey that I've been on and the work that I do with clients is very much about peeling back those layers, those inner blocks, those obstacles, helping the healing happen so that people can shift into this place of authentic confidence and really shine their light out and get past this fear of being seen, fear of marketing. A lot of like coaches and healers and entrepreneurs also have a kind of semi-hatred of sales and marketing as well. <laughs> you know, they find it a bit sleazy, a bit inauthentic. So it's helping people get past all of the blocks around that and really connect to themselves and their genuine essence. And Radiance, I think for me, it goes much beyond just being seen. It's about this emanation of light, this emanation of the truth that we are and has a very receptive and feminine quality for it. It's the feminine essence, should we say, which isn't gender related per se, but it's, it's rather than pushing and striving and having to force ourselves onto the world in order to be seen and heard, it's a way that we can just magnetically allure people with our light just by being an authentic expression of ourselves. And so there's a lot that gets woven into it in terms of the way that I approach radiance. So when I work with my clients, I work one-to-one -one in short 40 day rapid transformations or slightly longer three and six month programs, my radiant leader programs. Well, I always start with healing and it always starts with helping someone find core safety in their body and in their nervous system. So really when we feel safe, that we feel safe to be seen. And it's a lot often around safety that we don't want to put our head above the parapet. You know, we have all sorts of biological reasons triggering our reptilian brain for why we feel it's much safer not to draw attention to ourselves. And maybe that's because we grew up in an environment where it wasn't safe to be seen, where, you know, maybe our parents shouted at us or, or simply that there was neglect in some level, either you know, yes, physical neglect, but also emotional neglect. It can be hard to spot or even notice if we grew up with that. But if we had parents or teachers that just didn't see us, even just busy parents, or we were the middle child, you know, and we weren't seen, it becomes very difficult to see ourselves. So we go on this healing journey where we, with my clients, where we establish core safety and we start to see ourselves and we really start to my clients start to really connect to who they are and their gifts and see themselves and then know that they're worthy of being seen. So self-worth, self-love plays a big part in this. We have to feel like we're worthy and lovable. And we deserve to share our gifts because we know we have something to say, you know, and sometimes we don't always feel like that, right? We didn't always uh, pop out feeling like that. We have these kind of again, these limiting beliefs around not feeling good enough, not feeling lovable enough. So there's a lot of healing that that goes on around that. And a bit like the Rumi poem, you know, I love the uh, the love poet Rumi, who always talks about, we, we, we contact the love that we are, not by becoming something different or changing, but just by removing the veils, removing the layers that are obscuring our natural radiance. And that's what the healing that I do with my clients focuses on focuses on emotional and energetic healing of the heart. So it heals core relationship wounds, cuts energetic cords with all of that kind of relational baggage that we might be carrying around on our back. And it does, I do mindset work as well. So advanced hypnotherapy, neuro-linguistic programming, so that we get to the root cause of where those beliefs came from, pull them out and reframe them completely. And then the rest of the time that I'm working together, I'm working in a coaching system called Feminine Power. So this is all about how we are come to radi our radiant power in a different way. For a lot of us, again, like myself included, we have this relationship with power that feels quite aggressive. I, I, had a lot I spent a lot of time in the corporate world, in very masculine industries, football, railways, property, you know, very masculine. Wow very aggressive uh, environments to be in, very competitive. And I know a lot of 
a lot of people, a lot of women like my clients also have that experience. And I became a certain way. I, I developed these kind of hardened shells around me of protection. And I would work incredibly hard and I was very successful, but it really came at the expense of my health, right? You know, I was um, on that hamster wheel leading to burnout, definitely, and very disconnected from my body, very disconnected from my intuition, very disconnected from the strengths that I have as a woman in terms of my compassion, um, my receptivity, uh, my inner resources. And so the feminine power coaching system really helps women regain their power from this perspective, from our strengths as a woman. Mm -hmm. And then it helps dismantle the lens that we look through the world at, um, that old story like we let go of and we start stepping into this new story of who we are who we are authentically to be seen so a lot of coaching and then i weave in meditation i weave in work with the goddesses the divine feminine uh, because I, I love you know durga and lakshmi and gaia and white tara these beautiful goddesses that all refract different aspects of this one energy of compassion of firepower of abundance of of nature <coughs> of our connection to the land and so i work as well with the goddesses it's a really beautiful healing journey you know rather than just having to sit on a therapist's couch for 10 years or you know do this I've woven everything together that that helped me heal and transform in my own journey into into the radiant leader programs that I run with my clients so that so that we can start coming into our power as women and do it from a place that feels nourishing that feels feminine and graceful and is not going to have us burning out as well that is so powerful. And um, I just wanted to share with you how I understand um, what you're talking about, about that fear of being visible or that that unconscious block about staying invisible. You know, that was something that um, as of March 2020, when I needed to start teaching online, I absolutely came face to face with that mm -hmm. so having somebody like you a year ago would have been wonderful because i i really kind of foundered a little bit and had to um really do some deep soul searching to be able to recognize what what is it that's preventing me from just jumping online and and teaching and, and of course one of the things was adapting the material to be able to use it online. But the other one was those unconscious blocks. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so important to have someone who can help help you navigate those unconscious blocks. Because when you have a vision of something that you want to bring forward in the world, and it's not happening, it's it's for me, it was really difficult to understand all of the unconscious programming that um, kind of um, developed for me as I was growing up and having someone like you who can um, shine the light on those blocks and help go through that process of healing them to really embrace the confidence and um, the um, and to develop the um, inner that sense of power stepping into your power that is so important and having someone like you who uh, um, weaves so many beautiful aspects of um, stepping into your radiance um, it, it's just such a beautiful thing to be bringing forward for the women of the world to help each and every one of us step into our power with confidence that um, we can make a difference in the world we absolutely can each and every one of us has an incredible gift mm -hmm. so it's beautiful what you're doing with women i'm so happy to hear all about it thank you ava thank you yeah it's it's such a journey isn't it and it is a common one as well right yes, absolutely um, yeah yeah oh, beautiful thank you so much for taking your time to share with me today and i'm very excited and delighted to be part of this wonderful book with you Oh, thank you. I am as well. So um, thank you for being a part of this interview as well. Yeah. Blessings to you. Have a beautiful day. Oh, blessings.